Uh, well, good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to come and uh, talk to you about the uh, experience we had in Stratford. I'll try to give you a bit of a more uh, more of, a, of an overview or uh, approach to how we took it on a system-wide basis, um, and uh, hopefully that will be instrumental. The, the big thing for us was uh, a, 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 the context of this, I should say, is that we had a very large uh, rain event of a flood and a class action lawsuit. So I'll go through the details with respect to that. Uh, the first thing is just to, uh, you know, just give you an idea of what most people consider uh, Stratford to be. And some of the images of our city that, uh, you know, we have the largest uh, classical repertory theater in North America, and um, this is what pe most people think of when they, when they think of Stratford. That's the Avon Theater, the park system, Shakespearean Gardens, our heritage homes, uh, uh, events on our river system, music festivals, chef school, uh, downtown uh, boutiques, our industrial, we're an industrial city as well. However, on July 28, 2002, the people of Stratford had a very different view of our city. Uh, actually, the day after was a beautiful day. I don't. Have, I wish I had pictures of that night because it was unbelievable. But, but uh, it was a beautiful day except for all the water that was everywhere. That's a sanitary sewer system, of course. And uh, public meetings, uh, not, nothing to do with the city neighborhood public meetings came about. People were very angry. We had two emergency council meetings that Sunday. Um, uh, this gentleman here, Frank McLaren, actually, we get along quite well now. His, uh, his new wife works in my wife's law firm, and we socialize every once in a while. These pictures are from the Beacon Herald, our local newspaper. And we spent weeks and weeks um, with our own forces and contractors just taking away garbage that people piled by the side of the road, which, which we did free. So, um, just to talk a little bit about this, the, the, the basic conclusion that came about from this uh, system is that uh, we knew that which I'll we'll talk about later, we had a bit of a problem in this area. This is the Norfolk and Elgin area. It's a, it's a basin. Um, as, as many of you, I'm sure, know that uh, you design your storm service to take away uh, water, usually, you know, five or ten year flow, uh, uh, and you depend upon the road system to take the rest of the water away. Well, that doesn't happen in this area. And of course, when they got this massive rain event that was not even predicted by Environment Canada uh, on, the, on that night, um, you could canoe from property to property within this area. But we had some other smaller events in there, so we were already strategizing around it, but this changed everything. The first thing that we did uh, on the Sunday, we had, two, as I said, two emergency council meetings. Uh, we initiated uh, emergency aid program. We offered uh, anybody uh, up to $5,000 uh, after insurance. In many cases, we simply paid the deductible. Um, it, included in there was $1,000 for lost wages. There's a few people who took that up, but it's all within the $5,000. In a city of 32,000 people, we had 994 claimants, of which we paid 880 for a total of $1.2 million, an average per claim of $1,433. Uh, top five insurers were, were represented about 60. Uh, percent of those claims, 124 claimants had no insurance. Many of that was just like they were tenants and had no uh, insurance at all. Um, and a further 133 may have had no uh, sewer backup coverage. So we, uh, it, was a, it was a pretty ugly and difficult time within the city. Soon after that, within a matter of, I'd say, a month, uh, we had a class action lawsuit served against us by one of our, uh, by four of, of the people, including Frank. Um, it initiated uh, shortly after the flood. 
They claimed uh, $210 million uh, from the city. Uh, we fought that certification, but it was certified, and we settled out of court recently after seven years, uh, not even going to trial. The final payout that we paid was $7.7 .7 million. Uh, we gave no admission of liability with, with respect to that. The other thing that's interesting is municipalities in Ontario, and perhaps wider than that, uh, the deductible that we have is per household on matters like this. So, you know, we had a we had a fifty thousand dollar deductible. It didn't matter if it was ten thousand. The uh, the total cost of this claim was undoubtedly uh, going to land on on the city. Our insurer did uh, appoint legal counsel, uh, learners out of Toronto. Uh, we also engaged our own counsel, Siskins out of London, just to because it was such a big issue for us and. Uh, and uh, slowly worked our way through the process. So that's uh, what that was our big event. So I'm just going to go back in time and say what what precipitated this, uh, or sorry, not what precipitated. What's what's the historical perspective of of the situation within within the festival city? So uh, we went back to our archives and found some photographs that there, you know, um, um, of previous uh, uh, rain events that created situations. Uh, this is uh, notably around the Lorne Avenue area, which is a, the largest trunk uh, sewer within the city. And again, there's Crane, uh, a factory, in a, again along the Lorne Avenue area, and uh, but. But uh, the most recent experiences that we could really document were that there was a significant flood in 1983, nothing to the extent of what we had in 2002. But uh, more importantly for us, or, there was uh, two localized events in that same Norfolk Elgin area that I told you about, one in July 2000, and then just six months later, approximately in February of 2001, uh, where we had uh, a very mild spell on frozen ground and, uh, and rain. And uh, we, it, so in that Norfolk Galgan area, we were having sewer backups in that area, and council wanted something done right away. So what we, what we tried to do with respect to that was, um, is we really impressed upon council that something I guess my dad taught me a long time ago um, was that there's never time to do it right, but there's always time to do it over. So. We really stress that we, we really need to take a look at this, study it, and do it right. So we ask them to be patient, uh, not knowing of the 2002 situation, of course, uh, to do a sanitary sewer master plan, and to be followed then by a storm sewer master plan. And then we make sure that our investments, which we knew were probably going to be significant, uh, make sure that they were strategic. Uh, but. Uh, when we take a look at what previously happened, uh, in 1972 there was a study by Wiley and Uffel, Uffnell. Uh, it identified that there were a number of cross connections. We don't have uh, combined sewers within the city, but they did identify a number of cross connections. They, include, they concluded that there's adequate capacity for existing and predicted flow conditions. In the mid-1980s, in other words, right after the 1983 event, uh, the city did a large camera-wide study in smoke testing in order to identify cross connections and try to eliminate that, which 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 they did over a number of, of years, and obviously did not fully address the problem. So, as I said, we had we started this uh, sanitary master plan before the, the flood event. It was to analyze the sanitary system and to identify problems and solutions. It was to evaluate existing uh, conditions as well as uh, uh, take into account future development. We had one public open house on June 27th, which had uh, some interest because it was June 27th, not July 28th. And then after July 28th and November, November 27th, we had a completely different open house with a, a, with a lot more interest in, in that at the time. And uh, so we completed the uh, sanitary master plan. It identified about $35 million in priority projects for the sanitary system that were proposed, and about $16.5 million in strategic projects being uh, proposed, and uh, there was a strong will on council to proceed with these, given 
the situations that we hear that the June 28th, 2002 flood. <coughs> this shows the strategic, uh, the, thir the, the $35 million strategic uh, um, construction program. We did a, a class EA following the master plan and it laid out these, uh, these storm sewer system upgrades that were significant uh, to go along this area here along the river and uh, as well as going up to this area. It was a five-year program, which we largely did in five years, except for this area, which we're doing this year. It was held up because we needed to do it in conjunction with some storm um, sewer system. But it'll be completed. That work will start next week, and it will complete that first part of that process, and it will completely upgrade the, sa the sanitary sewer system in that area. And of course, if that solved the problem, my presentation would be over, but it's, it's not. So the next step is uh, is we did the Class EA to implement the sanitary plan and and uh, and then we did our storm master plan. Now that was meant to be following the ma the sanitary master plan, but given the flood, it was evident that uh, a lot of the backup, severe backup, uh, came from the storm system getting into the sanitary system, certainly from the weepers, but also just coming in people's windows and doors into the basement and down the, uh, down, the down into the sanitary system. So, um, so you know, we did the storm mask, we initiated that much earlier than we, uh, than we had planned, and then the class EA to implement the storm master plan, and it just took, um, at that time it, it was a matter of money. Now, after the years and the settlement of the class action, it's a matter of money and, and the political will to do it, which is still there, but it's not as, as strong as it was previously. So I think the real issue for us was, uh, now that we addressed the uh, sanitary system, that we needed to address the storm system master plan. The goal, of course, of that was to prepare a comprehensive action plan for future planning and implementation of the required changes uh, to meet uh, current and future needs. Um, the objectives listed here are to uh, ensure, you know, act, address the following questions. What is the existing storm system performance? Are there spare capacity to service lands that we had recently annexed and uh, are scheduled to annex? What improvements are required to the existing system? Review and update the city drainage policies and standards as required and create a citywide computer model that the engineering department continues to use today and finds it very, very useful. So that was one of the big advantages of both of these uh, programs. The master plan study area was, was the entire city. Um, and um, it also became evident that within the city there was a large area there was a large the study area was uh, mostly the south side of the city here but it was also evident that uh, a lot of the rural um, drainage systems uh, flowed into the city through a number of, of drains into our Lauren Avenue pipe. And uh, we were legally obliged to deal with that, of course, and we had to come up with a solution on how we're going to, how we're going to deal with that. Because the backup of the Lauren system backed all the way up in areas further north of that. <coughs> So uh, the master plan activities review the city's drainage policies and standards, development system improvements that would allow solutions to be based on local features. Um, they did a number of field activities as outlined here and review and updating the natural environment data from the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority and the Ministry of Natural Resources. Um, so they prepared detailed hydraulic models of over 600 pipes within the city. They assessed our storm sewer capacities and the major drainage flow system and ponding areas. And um, as we talked about before, is that we had to ensure that there are separate uh, private drain connections to both the, the, the sanitary and, and storm sewer, and we went with further smoke testing 
and dry testing in the area to, to find out where those were coming from and to make sure that they were at least separated. And then because the city, because the same as London, Carl mentioned in London, we have a lot of clay within the city. Uh, the city for years had allowed storms, um, sorry, um, roof water leaders to go into the go into the storm sewer and obviously that needed to change. Uh, of course with storm there's there's minor and, and major systems as I said before. Um, you know the minor systems are basically the underground, uh, some su some swales and gutters and the major systems we look to um, roadways and channels and overland drainage such as this to to deal with the with, with, with the others, but of course, Norfolk and Elgin was a basin and it didn't go anywhere. Uh, we, changed, we updated our policies. Uh, basement and foundation drains had to be set above the 100 year uh, HGL and above the water table. Foundation drains are to be sump pumped to a storm, a PDC to provide basement isolation. Uh, flow depths to be limited on local collector roads and arterial roads so that one lane was always free from flooding on arterials and some of the policy issues that we dealt with. Low points on the road grade should not exist unless the low points are conveying flow to the major system, whether it be the Avon River, Lake Victoria or other major drains. Minor system conveyance or retention storage of runoff from the event shall be considered where no suitable major store outlets exist and property shall be protected from surface flooding during the event. Roof water leaders are to be discharged directly, in all cases, to the ground. And similar to what you saw with the city of Saskatoon, we're looking at a sump pump system, whereby the, the, um, the foundation drains would go into a sump pump, be pumped up and into the, into the storm system with the roof leaders going off to the ground away from uh, being and not right next to the to the building itself and this just uh, just uh, just shows you the extent of, of uh, the flow monitoring that was done during the study it shows some hydraulic models and some of the issues that were raised that were uh, the, the major area was all over the city but you can see that there are other areas in other parts of the city that uh, the the, the hydraulic model said we needed to address. Most of these will be addressed as we upgrade those streets through normal uh, construction over a great number of years. We needed to really address the strategic projects first. Uh, we did a major, major drainage review, <coughs> identified low points where overland runoff had insufficient outlet to a major watercourse or lake, identify flood hazards due to major flow from large external areas, and identifiers of the minor system may capture runoff from extreme rainfall events with the potential to oversize the sewers in those areas. And this is just, uh, I'm trying to remember the name, uh, this is just a map showing the, uh, the, uh, the topography of, of the area that uh, was, was used uh, during the modeling of, of these events. So again, this shows uh, the major uh, storm draining system. It shows the areas where the ponding we had to address and uh, how we had to, had to deal with that in the master plan. Because the, the flooding events, as, as well as the sewer, storm, sanitary sewers, it was very evident that until we solved the storm sewer si situation, we were not going to provide an adequate solution uh, with respect to the homes, particularly in the Norfolk. Elegant area. The storm plan, master plan recommendations uh, were in three categories capital works, programs, and policy measures. The capital works they proposed were for the Lauren Avenue outlet system of, of uh, over $50 million, the collegiate art system of 50, over $15 million, and others were identified uh, about $5 million, and they also uh, said we need to do a five-year inspection and maintenance uh, program, which we, which we have, have done and actually continue to do. Monitoring uh, in the programs, uh, monitoring identified uh, areas where we need to monitor, flow reduction areas, and PDC isolation 
uh, are areas that we, we needed to address. Our priority has been on, on the capital projects because that's given, given the situation is, is an area that we needed to uh, really address. The PDC isolation, same as the other municipality, it is a very big challenge convincing homeowners to, to do that. Except for the ones who experience ongoing problems in their basements. Um, one of the big policy issues that was came up, and when this report came to council, we had uh, a new council in place. Most of the members were still there, but we had some new members who really uh, objected to the proposal to go from a 100-year storm event level in our policies to a 250-year storm event because, as far as we could tell from our research, we were the only municipality in Ontario to actually do that. The proposal from this came from the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority, um, which uh, 250 is a regional storm event. Uh, it was, it's still less than a Hurricane Hazel, which is a different level in each uh, watershed, but in ours it's over a, would it be over a 500 year storm event. But we, uh, Council, did adopt over the objections of a couple of the newer members to go to 250 year uh, level for stormwater management. As far as we know, we're the, still the only municipality to do that. It was a recommendation from the Conservation Authority. It's what's considered a regional storm in our area. And it's really a recognition, this is in my mind, it's really a recognition that we need to plan for the future, not the past. Because it is obvious to us that weather, weather, uh, uh, weather is changing. So some of the some of the uh, policy measures were, um, you know, we set some, um, uh, this is just a snapshot of, there's actually more, uh, the chart is quite large, but some of the areas that I pulled out uh, for local storm, a five year uh, full flow uh, uh, was designed for that. It's always been our policy to be designing uh, local storm sewers to at least five years, so that's confirmed here. Uh, trunks, uh, sewers uh, as above, and major overland, uh, overland flows to 250, as well as, as I previously mentioned, for development, they have to have on-site 250-year post-storm events. Uh, minimum pipe diameters, uh, mains 300 millimeters, catch basins 250 millimeters, building connection size 100 millimeters, and of course, some pumps to storms for foundation drain connections. It just uh, gives you an idea. Now, it, when we did the environmental assessment to implement this, things changed a little bit um, because this became quite expensive. But uh, this was the extent of the south side issues that we had to address uh, within the, within the conclusions of the master plan. The uh, this is the solution, and it's a, it became an interesting one where we found some our consulting engineers found some some unique solutions to it. And with respect to the water that came from the rural areas to the south, from the farm drains that came north to our Lauren Avenue system, what they did was we ended up with three ponds in this area, one, two, three, which are now constructed. Uh, we ended up with these ponds in this area as well. They were constructed under the infrastructure uh, program. And uh, these ones we had already committed ourselves to, which was too bad, but anyways, we, we didn't get any infrastructure money for those. And um, these, all this water is diverted towards these ponds. These ponds are only sized for the city. There's a large wetland area here. So what's happened is, is, the, is that there's a restriction on the water from those rural areas into our pond system so that they will uh, back up into this environmentally sensitive area here. Uh, this is all done with the approval of the, upper, the Conservation Authority and Natural Resources. And then once these ponds drain from the city system, they will go out through the system. A 250 year storm event for the city of Stratford, uh, we, we have to keep reminding council, it's a 15% increase in volume over a 100 year storm event. So where are we now? Um, we have a class uh, EA priority program. 
to be, uh, which is, as I mentioned before, will be completed in 2011. There's the strategic projects beyond that, but uh, I think uh, given how we've had to work so hard on budgets in the last five years to accommodate all of this, we're going to have to take some breathing room on that, but um, we will, the, the, the priority projects for sanitary will be completed this year. Uh, storm ponds have been completed, and it's been over $15 million. Um, that $15 million does include some, some uh, main work as well, that's primarily ponds. Um, some storm sewers have been put in place as we reconstruct, ro as we reconstruct um, uh, roads. To and, and where we need to have um, the, the larger storm sewer is because of the basins, and there's no overland flow uh, uh, options available. The 250 year storm criteria is being applied uh, to development, which certainly catches the attention of any outside developers that are coming into our city, but it's not been a problem in discouraging anybody. And we have settled the class action uh, settlement out of court, as I said, for 7.7 .7 million. So that's an overview. Uh, basically, when we looked at uh, the, the flood, uh, we looked at the sanitary system, but we were also to really address the problem within our city. Uh, the real issue for us was to also look at the at the, at the storm system, and uh, we've made a lot of headway to, to to date. And I guess the one difference is between the two very difficult public meetings that we had on that Sunday following the flood. At the time, uh, council um, uh, were, and the rest of us were being beat, beat up pretty good. We couldn't say we're sorry then, but we understand we can now. So, um, I guess the questions will come at the panel uh, discussion, so thank you very much. <laughs>